18. We're going to pick four numbers for this lottery. We can pick from 0 to 9. Those are the numbers we can pick from. Order is important. So we want to find the probability that we could win this lottery. So we have to count the number of ways that we win over all the possible outcomes. So how many ways can you win in the lottery? Do you have a slip? Ah, uh, no. Let's go get one. <sighs> one. One way. Right? You have a ticket, one ticket. It wins one way, not two ways. You don't have three possibilities of winning. You have one. Can't there be multiple winners in a lottery? Yes, but each one of them can only win one way. They have to have the right number. OK. So multiple can win, but only if they have identical tickets. OK. This is the probability of you winning. I suppose if you bought three identical tickets, you could win three times. Which, if you're really confident, might be smart, because if somebody else wins, then you get three shares of it, whereas they only get one of but playing the lottery in general is not smart, so let's just not do that. In case you bought all right, yeah, all the number of tickets that there are and the possibility of doing it. OK, let's see how many there are. In this very simple, very pared down version of the lottery, where you have only nine numbers to pick from, usually there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 or so of numbers you can pick from. There's a lot more. So let's uh, count the number of possible four digit tickets that we can uh, possibly make, okay? And assuming it's like the number ball comes out nine and you're not gonna pick the second nine, right? So you only have the rest of the possible numbers left. Uh, four balls get picked, numbers on them, and that's the lottery number, right? And order is important, meaning you specifically have to get it in the same order as they come out, okay? So if you pick seven, nine, one, zero, you lose. So how are we going to count all of the ways that you can make a four-number lottery ticket? Very slow that four numbers can come out of a nine. Or out of, actually, out of ten of them, right? Zero through nine makes a total of ten. How do we count all those ways? Presentation. CR six. Ten. P. How many are we taking? Four of them, not six of them. Taking four of them. Let's look at that tray over there. It says Tony on us. So 10 P4, that would be 10 factorial over 10 minus 4 factorial. That's 10 factorial over 6 factorial. This cancels out the 6 and everything after the 6. six one. So it's just 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. Comes out to be? 9,040. 5,040. So yeah, if you bought all 5,040 possible tickets, you win. But probably not going to win much money in a, in a lottery that's so, that the odds are so. Um, these are fairly high odds when you compare it to like a, a, a lottery where you have 50 or so numbers. They're not going to pay you as much of uh, the, no, the amount of money that went into it. So you take a little piece of that. Um, other questions? Yeah? 34. 34? I mean 39. Yeah. 39. Like I just do 50. <coughs> Okay, archery, let's see. So the target itself is 80 centimeters. Probability that an arrow that is shot at a target will hit the center circle. The center circle has a diameter of 16 centimeters. We're going to assume that it will hit the target, it won't miss the target completely, and that anywhere on there is equally likely. So what is the likelihood, what is the probability that you'll hit this little guy inside of 
this target. You can't really count the number of ways you can hit the bullseye, right? How many ways are there to hit the bullseye? Infinite, Infinite number. How many are ways, ways are there to hit the target? Infinite. Infinite. Are there more ways to hit the target or more ways to hit the bullseye? Uh, that's kind of hard to say. We can't, which is they're infinite. We can't count them. We cannot count the number of ways you can hit the uh, bullseye and then compare it to the number of ways you can hit the entire target. But we can compare how much space there is in the bullseye to how much space there is on the target to all together, right? So what am I talking about? Space. Geometric idea. Area. Yeah, I'm talking about the area of the target and the area of the bullseye. How do we calculate the area of a circular bullseye? Pi r squared. Pi r squared. What is r? 16 inches, 16 centimeters in diameter. Yeah. So it would be 8. 8 radius, right? And 8 radius, and what's the radius of the, the large target? 40. Yeah, 40. Yeah, 40. Right? So pi r squared for the uh, bullseye. Pi r squared, that's 40 squared. For the uh, whole target, pi cancels with pi. You get 64 over 1600 equals 16 over 400, 4 over 100, 1 and 25. Yep. Simplify that, right? The ratio of the area of the bullseye to the area of the entire target. I forgot my book. I just love your face when you say it. That's a nice face. If we're talking about shapes of things, then we can do the geometric probability where we take the areas and compare them. Area is available uh, out of the total area that's available. Okay. Any questions? Eight. Eight. Okay, we're choosing a number from one to fifty. What's the likelihood that a multiple of four is chosen? I'll take this opportunity to plug the homework video again. It'll help everybody out. It'll help you out, it'll help the whole class out if we all watch that. Um, I, wa I looked and there's been two views. Okay. You watched one, all right, that's, that's your half of all the people who watch it. That's good. Was it helpful? Yeah. Okay, commercial, right there. But I used uh, testimony. Which except, except for I number 18, I was still confused with that one. Oh, 18? Well, we were going over it, but yeah. watching. Uh, yeah, because I had to kind of invent a whole different model. So. Um, right, so anyway, there's example given for number 8, talked about a mole or some other number, so I don't do exactly your work for you. But what is the probability that we'll pick a multiple of 4? <coughs> hey, sorry, have you ever played the lottery? Multiple of four. Well, we're picking from one to 50, so we just need to count all of the multiples of four that are between one and 50. There's an easy way to count that, right? How about four times one? That's the first one. Four times two. Now I'm finding a way to count them. One, two, three, four. Four times three, and we just stop until, or once that number is too big, four times five, four times six, four times seven, four times eight, four times nine, Four times ten, that's forty. Four times eleven, forty-four. Four times twelve, forty-eight. And four times thirteen is too big. We don't even need to know what those, what those multiples are. Once we get to four times twelve, and that's forty-eight. And we know four times thirteen would be fifty-two. Then we don't count that one. So there's clearly twelve multiples of four that are between one and fifty. And how many numbers between one and fifty?
instead of just counting the number of ways that that thing can happen over the number of arguments. Okay. Other questions? Yes, sir. One more, if there's one, no more, if there's no more. Let's do the quiz. You ready? Let's get ready for that. Let's take an answer. That's not. So, do you feel like they can walk us through this problem? Go ahead, tell me, tell me about it. How do we find the probability of picking a card that is not a case card? Well, there are three case cards, so you multiply that by four because there's four of each of them. Then you subtract, then you take the back, there's ten non case cards, and multiply that by four, and you get 40 over 52. Okay, there are ten non case cards. Ten non case cards. For four suits. So there's 40. 40 non face cards. Over 52 non face cards. Divide phase. each down to. to into, uh, divide this by 4, divide this by 4. Yes. 10. 13. Which isn't surprising because how many cards are in each suit? 13. 13. And how many cards are not face cards in each suit? 10. 10 out of 13. So it's the same as the ratio of in each suit, what the probability would be. 10 that are not face cards, or a 13 in each suit. Wait, how many points in each card now? Four. Two for writing and three for trying. Uh, here's the table. Uh, it's an experiment, 150 die roll, die rolls. Um, and we want to talk about the experimental probability, how likely it, is it based on this experiment? And it's important to conduct experiments like this because, uh, let's say, for the, the number six, like how many times out of 150 rolls about would we expect the six to come up? One sixth of the time. One sixth of the time, one sixth of 150, what's that? 25. 25, we should expect to see it around 25 times. It comes up 30 times, so we're gonna keep an eye on that six. We're gonna keep rolling more than 150 times. We're gonna keep Keep an eye on that because it seems like maybe what? Didn't happen. If it didn't happen? If it did happen though, then if it did happen 30 times out of 150, what might that suggest? It's rigged. It's, maybe it's rigged. Maybe if we keep getting more and more sixes, more than we would expect to get out of, you know, more than one sixth of the number of rolls, considerably more, then we're starting to wonder about. That, that the fairness of that guy. Yeah. So it's important to conduct experiments and compare that to the theoretical experiment probability. Yep. What if we evaluated the guy and it was fair? Then you can send it off to a casino. And... Okay. So the table reporting those 150 die rolls. There we go. What is the experimental probability of rolling a prime number and I'm reminding you that one is not a prime number? So which numbers are the prime numbers? Two, three, and five. Two, three, and five are prime numbers. How are you going to figure out what the experimental probability of rolling a prime number is? Add those up. Complete it over 150. Add up two, three, and five. Which one was 10? Add up the number of rolls. The number of rolls that each of them showed up. OK, so add up 22, 18, and 27. Given that there are three of these guys, how often, like what should be the probability? What's the theoretical probability? 70. Yeah, 75 times out of 150 half the time. Yeah. So we should see some number around 75. And if we don't, then we start to wonder, is this, is this uh, die fair? Is it a fair die? Or is it rigged? So what do we get? Uh, 27 plus 22 plus 18? 67. 67 out of 150. It's not 75. And so that seems strange. 70, it should be 75. But 67, you know, it's not 12. When it should be 75. It's 67 when it should be 75. We're off by eight, eight rolls. Seems not bad. For 150? I would, I would keep a roll on. I keep keep an eye on, on that. If I were to keep rolling, I'd examine that uh, after I roll it 500 times. But by then we'll have lost a lot of money for the drink. Well, let's let's just do this in the safety of our own basements or wherever we conduct these. So uh, 67 and 150, are they, can we simplify those? 67 is prime. 67 is 
So that's going to be uh, four and four, so a total of eights for the eight, and I will four these fours in a second. 10.4. Here's a major distinction between 10.4 and 10.5. 10.4, only one thing is going to happen in a single event. In 10.5, we'll talk about multiple events, sequences of events. Okay? And I mentioned that because in 10.4, you, you see the word and. Okay? You need to distinguish that word and because people tend to think and means this happens and this happens and two things happen. Okay? Only one event happens, so let's talk about what that and means. By asking you this question, and it'll seem unrelated because I'm going to ask you about more. You can say, what's the probability if you flip a coin of getting a heads or a tail? Well, that's the probability of getting a heads. What's the, so? 100%. Okay. So you. Wait, 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 wait. Not necessarily. There's a. <laughs> no. Please don't say it lands on the side. I just, I tried. Gosh, it's so. It's really actually annoying because it's not going to happen. It can't happen. No. It happened happen? once. When? A coin landed on the side. Like, oh. back then. No. Back in the day. Back then. How many times? What happened? What did you do? Coin over a bat of jello. Stop. Do you want to get that? Yes. Okay, so assuming the very safe 100% assumption that it will not land on its side unless you specifically engineer a coin that has a side that is not all rounded and worn like a coin would be and could possibly land on its side, okay, we're using a quarter, it's not going to land on its side. It's going to land heads or tails. Uh, so the, the probability is, the probability of heads plus... Like I get to add this on. I get to win if I get a heads, and I get to win if I get a tails. So, 100%. That's 0.5 plus 0.5 equals 1, or in percentage is 100%. Okay. Move on. I'm going to roll a die this time. What's the probability of getting a 2 or a 6? You see, I win either way. This way or that way. What's that? One third. One third. How did you get that? Because it's two six, because there's six sides who die, and there's two six, which ironically, two or six, and then yeah. divide by two, you get one. We can uh, formulize oh, this. The probability of a two <laughs> plus the probability of getting a six, right? Because I win either way, this way or that way. I win, I get all those probabilities for me, all for me, right? So I get one sixth plus one sixth, that's one third, or sorry, two, two sixths or one third. Two sixths or one third. Jumping out a little bit, but I don't think he's skipping that step too. What the heck did they do? Yeah, I don't think they're going to get lost. It's going to be all right. 13. How do you get that? Because there's 13 different thingamajigs in a suit, and there's king or a queen, that's 2 over 13. Okay, it depends on what we're talking about. If we're talking about alphabet, that could be a good trick to play on Jordan. Two out of uh, uh, twenty-six. One out of thirty. Okay, so let's let's just change our minds. So Gordon can be wrong, and we'll talk about what's the probability of picking a letter out of the alphabet, a king or a queen. Well, I win either way. Or a K or something. K or Q. What's the probability of a K? What's the probability of K? From the alphabet. One out of six. Okay. What's the probability of a queen for a Q from the alphabet? One out of twenty six. Well, a queen from the alphabet is zero. Zero percent chance. Well, not necessarily. I don't know. I would be kind of queen. One out of thirteen. All right. So one in thirteen chance that you'll pick a K or a Q from the alphabet. Okay. Let's do M now. We <laughs> 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 the time. We got a half hour. All right. So all of these have something in common that these next examples won't have in common. All right. Uh -oh. So the first example I'm going to give you. Uh, so we are going to pick cards out of a deck of cards. What's the probability of getting a face card or? 
just want you to work on it if you if you if you see how this is dissimilar from the, the previous uh, three examples. Keep it to yourself for the moment. But I want you to work on finding the probability that you get a face or a heart card. You win either way. If you get a face card, you win, even if it's not a uh, heart. You if you get a heart, even if it's not a face card, you still win. What overall is the probability of that? So I want you to work on it. Don't shout it out. Don't give it away. Write it down. Come up with a number and all. We'll, we'll reconvene. Three thirteen plus one four. Okay, so three. Well, let's do it out of let's do it out of fifty two. So twelve fifty seconds. Uh huh. Over thirteen fifty seconds. Okay, let's look at why we would choose those numbers because this is the probability that you'll get a face card. Plus, this is the probability. You get a uh, heart. I'm just going to draw a heart. Mm -hmm. seems, seems good. Why Same as before. Why didn't you draw So why is this not producing cartesian? What is causing us to be slightly off at it? Because when you do 13, when you have 13, that's all of one suit yeah. plus the face cards. So that means you got uh, all of one face and uh, all of one suit. Yeah. That means for the 12, you don't need to add 3. You need the minus 3 and make it 9. So we should also subtract 3 from this. Yes. What are these three cards? Those are the face cards that are in the heart. Uh, Those are the hearts that are also face cards. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's counting, but it can't be. Oh, yeah, that's smart. Yes, we, just, we count it by adding the 12 to the 13, we've counted the king, queen, and jack of hearts two times. To give you a picture of that, we're going to draw a bit diagram. Okay. Here we have the face cards. Okay. Well, there are definitely 12 face cards, right? And here we have the hearts, and there are definitely 13 hearts. The thing about it is, there's... There's 10 hearts right, that are here. We got the two, we got the three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ace. Okay? And over here, the face cards, we've got the uh, Jack Queen King of Clubs, Jack Queen King of Diamonds, Jack Queen King of Spades. But what's in the middle? Three Jack Queen King. Three half three hearts. We've got this, we've got a Jack Queen King, those are face cards. We've got a heart and a heart and a heart. Those are all also heart cards. So when we just add these probabilities, what we're really doing, ignore the 52 for a second, we're adding the 12 and the 13, those possibilities. Well, when you take the 12, that's this whole circle. If you add this whole circle, that whole circle, 12, includes that little slice there. And then when you add the 13 to it, you're adding this whole thing, which also includes that same little sliver that that first circle had. Right? So now we have this whole circle, and this whole circle, which means we have this like moon piece and this kind of moon-shaped piece and two of these, right? So we need to take away one of those. Okay, if we want to take the 12 and, and add, uh, well, 10 of these, or if we want to uh, take all 13 of these and add nine of these, but if we add 12 and 13, we've counted the three that are in here two times. We don't want to do that. We want to discount one of those. We've duplicated. We've got too much. Okay. And a similar problem comes up if we have uh, three events or three descriptions. What's the probability of getting a, a face card or an even card or a, a heart? Okay. Well, then there's overlap between all three of those things. We won't, we won't get into that. Though. So we want to take the probability of a face card plus the probability of a heart minus the probability of what? What would you describe these as? It's a heart and a face card. Face and heart. So we take the probability that we that the card that we draw, the one card that we draw, and we're talking about a single event here, like I said at the beginning of the class. Taking one card, if it's a face, I win. If it's a heart, I win. If it's a face and a heart, I win. But if I just add the face, face probability and the heart probability, I'll be counting one of those probabilities, or a probability twice, the probability of a face and a heart. So take one of those away. There we go. Okay. Any questions from that? Ten point five. Let's try another one. Those two circles are like cross-eyed eyes. Those two.
two things right there. It looks like they're I oh, open cross eyes. Very cross eyes. Did they do an update on the board? <laughs> on the what? Okay. On the boards? Um, not recently that I saw that. We can have new transition. I mean, that's yeah. just a setting for the game. And your, um, I think you need to change your bulb. It just does that from time to time, and then you turn it back on, and it is okay again. I don't know what it is. Okay, so this would be, again, picking cards out of a deck of cards. It's a great thing, a deck of cards. We talk about probability. I want you to consider this. Keep in mind what we talked about in the previous example. So we're going to pick a, a, a number card. Okay, so we're not going to count jacks, queens, or kings. Just number cards. Are we counting aces? No aces. Aces aren't. I'm not, not going to consider the numbers, specifically cards with numbers. What is that greater than six? I mean, not six, right? That's not greater than six. Seven, eight, nine, or ten. Uh, and then even, meaning cards with numbers on them that are even numbers, right? So, so six, six is being counted. Uh, so six is one. Six will count, but only because it's even, not because it's greater than six. Right, so think about that. Keep in mind what we did in our previous example. We don't want to count that overlap twice. Okay, so we the probability of a greater than six or an even. We can follow the example from before. We're going to find the probability of greater than six plus the probability of even minus the probability that, that what? What kind of card? Even and greater than six. Both of those things we want to take that away because some of these cards are even and some of these cards are greater than six, so we want to take away that overlap. What's the probability of getting a number that's greater than six? How many numbers are greater than six in that deck? Four tenths. Seven, eight, nine, ten. If you're not doing the test. Let's do out of fifty-two just so that we can the denominator will be the same. out of 10 because we're picking them out of all of the cards. Yes, yeah, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it would be out of 13. Four out of 9. Four out of 9. Out of 13. Out of 9. 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 Out of we're just not. Yeah. We're just not we're just adding them into the. I was de I was I defining what greater than six means and defining what even means. Sorry. For so we're still so putting it over fifty-two. Yeah. So how many cards are greater than six in a deck of cards? Uh, we got seven, eight, nine, and ten. That's four in each suit. Four suits. Four times four is sixteen out of fifty-two. Plus, what's the probability that we'll get an even card? Okay, I got, I got a different answer here. <laughs> Good. So I got yeah, two. Uh, five in each suit. Five in each so suit, 20, 20 all together. 20 out of 52. Minus the cards that are even and greater than six. Why don't you just go two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's two even. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. What? There's two even that are greater than six. Yeah, in so each suit. There's four in each suit. So eight. Eight. And in the end we get 16 plus 20 is 36 minus 8 is 28. 52. So, so board. Well, we can divide both of them by four. Seven. I kind of just did uh, a little bit of that one. Did what? Did it, um, no, I, I, I didn't do the add uh, adding minus thing. Uh -huh. I just finally uh, found uh, all the numbers that are even that are below six, which yeah. is two, four, and then that's six and it's even. Mm -hmm. So you got three there, and yep. then you got all the numbers that are bigger, uh, bigger than six, which is seven, eight, nine, and ten. Mm -hmm. And then once you get uh, once you got all of those, you just uh, you add them uh, to go. So there's seven of them. 
take mm -hmm. seven times four, right? Which is twenty-eight, mm -hmm. and that's twenty-eight over fifty-two. Yep. And this can play down to seven out of thirteen. The reason I don't do it out of thirteen for each of these is just because I don't know. It's just the way my brain works. I like to think of it out of fifty-two. Wow. I know the denominators are going to be the same, so I don't have to find common denominators. Because sometimes uh, we'll do it out of thirteen. Sometimes it'll be out of fifty-two. Like um, how many hearts are there? If I make it the probability that I pull a heart, then it's it doesn't work to just isolate it to each soup. So I just do always do it out of fifty-two. It's not because it's right or wrong. Because I did it that way. Yeah, yeah but I, I thought we were killing the like, thirteen. Uh, thirteen. Yeah, so it just like makes sense. That makes sense. I guess yeah, you can get there from what I said. Yeah. Yeah. But I meant because the last class asked, well, bigger than six. If we're playing poker and and you have the best card you have is six, and the best card I have is a king, I win. This king is bigger than six. Unless you have a mayor finding it. Yeah. yeah. Or Yes, unless you have something better than the thing that I said was the best thing. <laughs> yeah, try to. Next. These new desks are magical. By the way, I went and uh, I looked up what you said, but permutation mark. <laughs> and uh, other people have brought that up. But that makes sense. I'm almost original. It's pretty neat. Almost. Almost a little cancer for sure. It could be, maybe you could get all over Facebook. You could make a little thing and like, why what? I don't think anyone cares in that one. Except for me. I do. Are you on Facebook? I would post it. Will you be my friend? No. I would love it. When I graduate from high school, will you be my friend? Yes. I to keep an eye on you. Don't be Connor's friend. What are we shuffling around? We got it till two. Two five. Okay, so this That's twenty minutes away. The shuffling is all done. <laughs> so okay, so this is example three on page seven oh eight. Example three. So they're giving us some numbers here. Let's see. Uh, so there's two hundred students total in the senior class. Uh, one hundred thirteen are either varsity or on the honor roll. So one hundred thirteen are varsity or honor roll. Uh, 74 seniors who are varsity. Uh, 51 seniors who are honor roll. 51? Yep, 51. Uh, what is the probability that a randomly selected senior is both a varsity athlete and on the honor roll? That doesn't make sense. Why? 74 plus 51 is not 130. Uh, why is that? It's more, right? Yeah. Why is it more? Why is it coming out to be more than 113? Because, because there are people are in both. Some people are in both. There's overlap there, right? Okay. Overlap. What's the question? So what's the probability that we get we pick somebody and they randomly uh, selected our varsity and they are on the other one, which means they're part of that overlap. What's the probability that you pick somebody that's part of that overlap? So they're in the funky connected eye part. They are in that funky connected eye part. We're looking for that. Right. Well, we got this little formula we can follow. The probability of A or B happening is the probability that A happens plus the probability that B happens minus the probability that A and B. 6%. First of all, let's get it exact. Let's get it exactly 0.03. Let's check your work. Um, so do we know the probability of A or B happening? Yes. What's that? 113. 113, that we know that. There, there are 113 people who are in either one group or the other, including that overlap, out of 200, of course. Do you know the probability that when we pick somebody, we'll, they'll be from the varsity? Will be what? 74. 74 out of 200. Okay, the probability that somebody would be on the honor roll, it's 51, 200, minus the probability that they're in a. Can we just put like X or something? I want X back. X. Yeah. In 
Can this be X? Yeah. Well, you can do what you want in your paper. I want to be specific for anybody who's watching it. All right, so we could uh, subtract you to these probabilities and then. Should the last one be over What do you mean? This one? Mm -hmm. No, this is a number that is over 200. It's I don't probability. think the probability over 200, the probability is whatever over 200. This P stands for probability. Okay. So, so it's probability. X over <laughs> um, I guess we could. I don't know why we would. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> okay. So we can subtract 74 and 74 over 200, 51 over 200. This side that'll leave us with a negative probability of A well. and B. So then we could just make it. It'll, this obviously could be negative, and we can make it positive. So 113 minus 74 minus 51 is what? Negative 12 over 200 equals negative probability of A and B. Let's pretend that's the word and. So the positive probability of A and B is positive 12 out of 200, or a 6 out of 100, or a 3 out of 50, which equals 6%. Mm -hmm. Exactly 6%. OK, according. <laughs> Well, if we just listened to me before, we would have been done like 27 seconds earlier. But well, the point is to we teach all everyone how to do it, so just say this is the answer we're really hoping we have. Well, who is a guy who's a smart guy? Yeah, one. Yeah, I was being sarcastic. Mm -hmm. I did it. I'm talking about me. Now. All right. Uh, uh, so that takes us through 10.4, talking about disjoint, where the possibility that they happen, like both things are true about the same event, is impossible. Mm -hmm. Like getting a heads and a tails, getting a, a six and a two when you roll a die. That's not possible, can't happen. Yeah. So the probability of A and B, then that piece is zero, we're talking about disjoint, okay? So we're talking about mutually exclusive, okay? One thing happening excludes the other thing from happening. You get a two, you could possibly also have See, in all this that I'm talking about, this and that, this or that, we're talking about one event. You pick one student, one card, roll one die, flip one coin. When we say this and that, we mean attributes of that event. Okay? If we say this and that at 10.4, we're talking about it's even and it's bigger than six. It's, uh, it's a person in varsity and on honor. It's one thing. It's one thing. But in 10.5, which we're about to do, it's one thing after. Other, that's what we mean by and. So I'm going to change the word and in this section to then. Okay? The and in 10.4 and the and in 10.5 mean completely different things. The and in 10.5 means then. Right. So that's what I'm going to go with. When I see and, I'm going to try and always remember, remind you of the word and. Or at least put and in there. So and means and then in 10.5. So, so the person who wrote the book was an idiot in 10.5. <laughs> no, the person who wrote the book just followed the same convention that every other. Yeah, book is ever followed. They might have put a little piece in there. If it were my book, I would have a little strike to write every hand in 10.5. It's not my book. <laughs> um, a little thin. Because everybody else does say and in both situations. It gets used. You just have to know the context. Well, right, why would I force you to figure out the context when I can just say then? But I'm sure you guys have done this before. I'm sure you've multiplied probabilities together before, but I want to have so it's like I, Y. This is I. I don't know why it's like I. I say it, it has multiple meanings, and you have to know the context. Uh, okay, yeah. Why? <laughs> is All right, so this is a guy named Dan Meyer. He's a very smart guy. He, uh, I forget which university he works at, but he researches what's the best way for people to learn things, or for things to be taught. Okay. So uh, he does this thing called three-act math, and this is one of those things. And the first thing we have to do is watch a little video. If you're wrong, 
you're wrong, if you're right, it's kind of annoying and not helpful. <laughs> okay? <laughs> you maybe get to be right, then, but then nobody else really goes through the experience of learning it. Okay. Well, you're going to ask what the, what the tint is, right? Yes, Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not helpful to everyone. Be considerate of everyone. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the question is that we, that we would ask would be, what is the tint of both sunglasses together? Is it going to be 100%? No. I could always see me. Okay. <laughs> well, here's the thing. When, if, if I give you a similar situation where I say, okay, I'll give you this coupon for 50% off at, I don't know, where? Cabela's. It's coming up. Okay, so they're opening. Let's, so let's say that, that I give you a coupon for 50% off. That's great, that's a saving. And then you go to the store and it's a 50% off sale. Okay? This may be you or it may not be, but you might think, I get it for free. 50% off, 50% off. That's 100%. Okay, that's not how it works, but that's how a lot of people think, right? Yeah. So, what happens when we have a 50% and a 50% after that? Let's let's think of it for for instance. Hold on. I'm not looking for somebody to teach it to me. I already know the answer. We take fifty percent of the original amount and then take fifty percent of the reduced amount. Right. And then add that. So fifty percent left. Here comes everyone. I don't know why. Get you to be right. Who cares? Okay. So. Sunlight is coming at this first pair of glasses, and it has a 50% tint, which we could think what blocks is like half of the light. But you get to thinking about that. I don't know exactly what that means. It blocks half the light. Uh, so half the light gets through. Okay. And now this second pair of glasses is going to block half of that light. Right. So it's going to block half. If we had another pair, it would block half of that light. So actually, to block all the light would be impossible. Technically impossible. Well, eventually. It's going to be functionally possible because eventually you're just not going to be able to see anything through all those pairs of glasses because there's there's things about the real world that that don't work as well as we would theoretically like them to. And you're going to look funky with like ten glasses on your face. Then yeah, that would be embarrassing. Okay, but that's the idea that I want you to get. Not. Um, so a lot of times when people learn about probability of this and then that, they just remember, oh, the word and is there, and the word or is not there. The word and then means you can multiply the probabilities together. Okay. I don't want you to be in that camp. I want you to think about it. Why would I multiply these probabilities together? Because it's like this. It's like a couple of pairs of sunglasses. Each of which represents 50% probability. Okay, so let's say that that means, like this represents flipping a heads on a coin, and this represents then flipping a tails. So all of the possible coin flips are coming at us, right? How many of them are going to be heads? Uh, half only of half them. of the flips get through. Half of the flips, like, do we care about, right? Do we go on and try a second flip to get a tail? So we only try on half of the total flips to try and then go on, because we, we've got a heads now. Right? Now, how often after we flip a heads are we then going to flip a tails? Half of that time. Okay. So what's the probability of getting a heads and the tails, which really means heads then tails, will be the probability of getting a heads times the probability of getting a tails. That's 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25. And then again, some, whatever's next would be a 0.125, and then whatever's next. If we flip the oh, if you flip the third? Yeah. If we had a, th a third event that happened, and that was, it didn't even matter whether it's heads or tails, you're going to multiply by number 0.5. Okay. That's why we multiply probabilities together, because it only happens a fraction of the time, and a fraction of that time, and a fraction of the next time, depending on how many events happen in a row. Okay. Um, this, and are you still learning? That guy right there.
So what's the probability we'll get a red, a green, and a yellow? And I want you to, to realize these are what we call independent events. They're independent because does the first spin affect the second spin? Nope. No. Does the first coin flip affect the second coin flip? Nope. If I flip 50 heads in a row, what's the probability I'll get a tails next? 50%. You would think that because I've got so many heads in a row, I'm due for a tails. But it's absolutely independent. You might think well, that, that coin's not very fair. So actually, it's probably more likely that you'll get heads next because how would you get head, 50 heads in a row? It's, it's very unlikely. You're good. Yeah. How, how, how do you mean? Yeah. The probability. Uh, you make it so let's talk about the probability of a red and, which really means then, a green, and, which really means then, a yellow. So you got three events. Are we going to take it like a, with degrees of, of a circle, or are we going to count one of like the ones? Like no, they'll right, right. take the, the same amount of degrees, right? So we'll just count the number of, of spaces. OK, yeah. so for like red, five, yeah, green, one of Red is five out of how many? <laughs> it's 16. It's hard to count that. Thank you. <laughs> 5 out of 16 times. And then 4, four. Out, of and four out of 16. Four. Times 4 out of 16 again. Yep. Okay, because here's what's happening. Here are all the possible spins. Okay, it's just a bar that represents all the possible spins, all the first spins that I could have. Well, how likely is it that I'll get that first red? Only 5 16 of the time, like a little bit better than a quarter, so like right there. Okay. All this other time, we don't even go on and try a second spin, right? So 5 sixteenths of the time, we'll go on and try the second one. Well, how often of that time will we get then a green? Well, 4 sixteenths of whatever quarter of the times you try. Okay, so 1 fourth of that is how often we'll actually, and then another fourth of that, and then a fourth of even that. So this, right, this little sliver compared to this whole original you know, possibility, that's the probability we're looking at. We're looking at a fourth of a fourth of five sixteenths. How do we find a fourth of a fourth of five sixteenths? We multiply those fractions together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really just come back here and we said a fourth, right? So one fourth, one fourth, uh, that's as good as it gets. So we get five over 256. so far have been uh, independent, meaning the first thing does not affect the second thing. Can you give me an example of two things that can happen in a row, the first thing happening affecting the second thing happening? Pull one card out of the deck. You pull the first card out. If you don't put it back, then the next card, well, the probability is different than it was before. Or if you have a bag of marbles and you take out a red marble and you keep it, and then you go to try and take another marble, what did it change? Bad. We love marbles. It's going to be like pumas and white urns. The responsibility of a king and, which really means then, we're talking so much then, an even number card. Well, is that just the probability of a king times the probability of getting it even? If you keep the king, you know. No, if you put it back. Now we've made independent events. But if I keep it, which is without replacement, that's the yeah, answer. Sorry. It's not just a probability of even, like normal probability of even where we have a full deck of cards. We don't have a full deck of cards. You get rid of the, like, never uh, of so the way we say that is the probability of even given, given that we already have a king. The king's already been drawn on the first card. We have to put it back. 
Now if you put it back again, that's just independent. That's like you have yeah, two so decks back. Anymore. So what's the probability of getting a king out of a full deck of cards? One, 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 four, fifty seconds. Let's just do it that, that way. Four, fifty, four hundred fifty-two. If it simplifies down and grid, if it doesn't, well, I guess if we're multiplying it, it doesn't really matter all that much. Anyway, now we definitely did have a king. What's the probability of getting an even now that a king is out of the deck? Hi, that's four. It's not different because the king it doesn't affect the even card. Well, yeah, that's there's true. There's still just as many evens. So how many evens are there? But there's, there's now there's only 51. There's five in each. Five times four, 20. That's so 20. Uh, out of one. 51. one. That's where it changes it because there's one less card. That king that's gone, it's not an even, but it is one less card. It makes our, our even a little bit more likely. A better chance. Yeah, now that we've taken one of, the, one of the cards away. So we would multiply these together. Yeah, we would get this is a one out of three. This is going to be 20 out of whatever 51 times 13 is. 663. 663. And then I know this, I know the bell is going to ring before we get done with this last one, but I want to show you what the probability tree looks like. Okay. Um, Sections. These two, four, five, and five. Um. Okay. So we're just going to do the example from the book. Let's say you get in the car. You got a choice to put on your seatbelt or not. Right? And studies have shown that if the driver of the car, especially if this driver is So if your parent decides to put on their seatbelt, you're more likely to put on your seatbelt, right? Sure. Yeah. Let's say so. If you grow up with your parent putting on their seatbelt, you're more likely to just like, well, that's what you do, you put on your seatbelt. Okay? So we start to make this probability tree. Because we're going to ask, what's the probability that any random student will put on their seatbelt when they get into a car? Okay? Well, let's see. 69% of adults do put on their seatbelt. So you're, if you get into a, a, a car or you select a random car, 69% of those cars will have adults with seatbelts on them, which means that 31% uh, will not be, okay? Uh, if you need to go, you can go. I will, I'll just keep on talking. There's also an example on the, the homework video that already exists. It's at the World So. If your parent or guardian or whoever wears their seatbelt in your seat, a certain amount of likely, you're 66% likely to wear your seatbelt, right? Okay? The adult wears and does not. Which means you're 34% uh, likely not to wear your seatbelt. If they don't wear your seat, their seatbelt, you are only 26% yeah. likely to wear yours, in spite of the fact that they don't wear theirs, which means that you're 74% likely to not wear your seatbelt. Okay? So, you hurt me. The likelihood that you'll wear your seatbelt, you'll either wear your seatbelt because you're, or, you know, your parent wears their seatbelt and therefore you do. Or they don't and you wear it in any way. Okay? So 0.69 times 0.66, that's how that's how likely you are to have worn it because your parent has worn it. And 0.31 times 0.26 is how likely you are to wear it even though your parent doesn't wear their seatbelt. And both of these together how likely you are to just wear your seatbelt. How likely it is that a random person will be close to the Multiply those together, multiply those together, and add them together. Like I said, there's a video uh, walking through a, another probability tree.